Today's what if is going to be what if Tanjiro became a ghoul. So it's going to discuss how Tanjiro becomes a half ghoul because there'll be a little few ghouls in Tokyo for now. But I hope this what if turns out good and we get a part two. So it's going to be the video now. So when it begins, Tanjiro meets a girl named Rize, who at first he falls in love with. But then after that, when they're dating one another in the evening, she takes a bite of him and then some falling trees crush her and then Kani, then he's taken to the hospital and Tanjiro wakes up with her half Kakugan which makes him a half ghoul he, he's at the hospital and um he, he realizes that he can't eat food and of course he sees the ghoul eye he says what's happening to me then he goes home and then he finds out that his family's been massacred and then he takes Nezuko along with him and then Nezuko tries to kill him but bites off his hand and of course he loses control and starts eating his hand and um it's tasty to him so that means Tanjiro can eat his own body and just heal quickly without having to eat any humans. And then Giyu shows up, discovers everything, Nezuko tries to defend Tanjiro and then he accepts the two of them and gives him some supplies. Tanjiro then takes Nezuko into a cave and makes a box or um or something else to keep Nezuko from the sun and then they go to Orokodaki slash Zakanji they train for two years Nezuko also uses sleeping Tanjiro eats his eats his body and then fully recovers eats parts of his body or um or just the dead bodies that committed suicide on Anteku because there is going to be Anteku as well and of course he beats the demon that kills or Kodaki's other children, he gets his sword, goes, comes black, and then after that he fights the ring demon, and then after that he fights the demons with the balls and the arrows, and then he defeats them as well. So because of his Kagune, he's able to, to unleash it on them, of course, and he gets so powerful about the situation, and of course he still meets um, Tamayo and Yoshido, and they still take the blood of Nezuko and Tanjiro and of course take the blood of those other dead demons because they're gonna need it to cure the two of them. Meanwhile, Tanjiro and Nezuko go inside this mansion and they find Zenitsu and Inosuke and of course they decide to kill all the demons in there including Kyogai who's the drum demon. Tanjiro mastering his Kagane this time and controlling his more ghoul side. And of course he can't let anyone know that he's a ghoul. Except Zenitsu and Inosuke. But at first they're like. How, how come you're a ghoul? And then he's also like. Don't worry I'm not going to eat any humans. And then they're all like. Yeah he's on our side. And then they still contemplate about not killing Nezuko. And then Zenitsu falls in love with Nezuko again. Like the typical timeline of the main anime. And now let's get to the spider arc. Tanjiro and his friends go to the mountains and they find some spider demons, namely Ryui and his fake family. They manage to defeat a lot of them, leaving the spider demon and Ryui. So the female spider, the one that's the daughter spider, who is running and she's like, no, I don't want to be like this. I want to be a human again. I can try and do some good. But then Shinobu comes into the picture and Shinobu intentionally says something that'll make her try and kill her. And she knows that she was going to kill her anyway, even though if she did not want to hurt her anyway. Because if she hadn't have said that, they could have been friends. But then we, Zenitsu, then we get to Zenitsu beating up the Tim Burton-like spider and then of course Zenitsu's cured. Then, of course, Tanjiro still manages to beat Ryui because he lost control of his ghoul side and managed to just eat part of himself, fully heal, and then he's normal. Until Gi shows up, and then, of course, Shinobi's like, should we kill Nezuko? And then, of course, Gi is like, no, we shouldn't. They fight one another. Kane, who also has the name of Kane from Tokyo Ghoul, is told to kill Nezuko, but she couldn't, and so they decide to bring them to the Hashira. The Hashira still try and contemplate whether they should kill Nezuko or not, 
But some of them are saying yes, and some of them are saying no. And in fact, Juzo is now a Hashira at this point, because I want to change it a little bit. Sanami is like, yeah, we should kill her. But of course, they find out that Tanjiro is a half ghoul. And so they decided right, we should kill them both. But then, they, then Tanjiro defends himself, saying that he only eats dead bodies and that he only eats himself. So they decide to keep him alive. And for Nezuko, they still contemplate until Sanami brings out his bloody arm. And then Nezuko is like, I'm not going to eat that. And then, of course... They decide to accept it, and then Tanjiro and his friends go into training mode while Kibutsuji is plotting out his next evil plan. And Kibutsuji tells Enemy to kill Tanjiro and his friends, and now that they've finished their training arc, and now it's time for a train arc. The Mugen Train movies events happen, everything plays at the same, Tanjiro's master is Kagune, and of course he comes to terms with everything about Rize, and the fact that she's re that she's Kibutsuji's daughter, which will make more sense, and that she was born differently, and that she was born human, and that she became a ghoul, or maybe she was just born a ghoul her whole life, and then Tanjiro fights more demons on the train, they make it to enemy, and then they kill him, and then of course Akaza kills Ren Goku, and Tanjiro tries to kill Anami, but he fails. But he still makes more effort into killing him, which is nice. And then that's gonna end the what if here, because I need to solve season two when it comes out now, soon. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and comment. So what I'm saying is feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.